well, I'm going to speak in English, but if later you want to ask me a question in Spanish or Italian and, and, and Catalan, <laughs> that's all. Uh, now, thanks for the, um, the invitation. Uh, I'm really surprised because here I found a lot of young people. I think that's very important for the future of Wikipedia and, and the Wikimedia and all this environment. As you can see, we are going to talk a lot about media ecology, media evolution, and environments and concepts like that. Well, um, have you heard about media ecology before? Um, the first to talk about media ecology was Marsha McLuhan in the 60s in some kind of private conversations, communications, and in the late 60s, in 1968, uh, Neil Postman uh, from the New York University who was the first one to, to, to give a conference about media ecology. And in the early 70s, 72, 73, Neil Postman organized the, the first graduated course of uh, media ecology in NYU. So we have about 40, 45, almost 50 years of uh, media ecology history and evolution of this, we can say paradigm, or maybe not. It's, yesterday we had a good conversation about that with a couple of professors. Uh, we st media ecology is, is, is not still a, a, a discipline, it's a, it's a work in progress. So, so that's because it's also very interesting to, to work on that. Well, in the first part of my talk, I'm going to just to show what's going on in this uh, media ecology or in the new media ecology. Just another description, a map of uh, what's going on. The, these are the main trends, the main things emerging from this media ecology. Well, the old media ecology, we have broadcasted in the old media ecology, it was the one-to-many model. Hmm? So I think the big change in, in the new media ecology is that we have a new paradigm, the paradigm of uh, networks. Uh, so we can say, we can talk about this transition from broadcasting to, to network and from the one-to-many to the many-to-many -many model. This is really important, this is really radical, it's a big change uh, because we had a lot of, uh, many, many years, the broadcasting model. Broadcasting is, is, is going to survive in the sense that it will not disappear, but we are thinking, we are watching every day more and more practices in the other part of the paradigm, in the, in the paradigm of uh, the many-to-many -many communications. In the 90s, uh, the beginning of the 90s, more or less, we had a broadcasting was hegemonic, and the arrival of the web changed everything. Uh, I remember I was living in Italy in the 90s, and I remember the conversations, the uh, academic and theoretical conversation about that. I remember professors saying, oh, the web, oh, that's a, an American fashion. It's going to last a couple of years. You know, the new thing from California, ah, forget about that. Other scholars, they said, well, Ah, it's a new media, it's like radio, like television, that's all. No, the web is, it was something more like that. Uh, we can say that the web created an ecology inside a big media ecology. It's a specific area, big area that has generated a lot of new media experiences. It's not only one media. Some scholars, they prefer to talk about the web as a meta medium, a media of media. If you see most of the most important practices, media practices today, Facebook, Twitter, Wikipedia, they were born in the web. And the web is going to generate many new things. That's because it's important to keep the web alive and keep the web open because it's, a, it's an experimental field. It's the place where the new things are, or many new things will be created. And that's one element, the big change from broadcasting to uh, the network paradigm. We have now a big bang of new media species in the media ecology. In the late 80s, when I finished my undergraduate courses in, in the University of Rosario in Argentina, uh, this was more or less the media ecology. Uh, with my friends, colleagues, we used to say, okay, I'm going to work on the radio, I would like to go to television. Two of them say, okay, I'd like to work in the cinema and newspaper, that was all. It was a cool degree, social communication was a cool place, a cool profession, but that was the media college in the late 80s. Now we can see this explosion of new media, and here we can create a link with the evolution of 
biological species. You know that in specific moments in the evolution of the planet, in the Precambric moment, 250 million years ago, we have an explosion of new species. Then we have big extinctions. Well, now we are living an explosion of new media species. Maybe the, many of them will disappear. You can see the, the dynamics of social networks. What's new today, to, tomorrow maybe it will be old, or maybe, maybe disappear. So we are in the middle of this explosion of new media species. And it's beautiful for people studying media. That's great for us. What about the net, the network, the web? It's an organic and complex entity. It expands, evolves. It's like a huge organic entity. Here we have some data. They're old from 2014 about the evolution of this web and the activity in real time of the network. It's incredible because sometimes we are in front of the screen and we are doing our things, messaging, upgrading Wikipedia. And it, sometimes it, it's difficult for us to, to think in the rest of the people doing that at the same time. I recommend you this website. You can see in real time what's going on in the web. Since you enter in the website, you can see the numbers. It's huge. They did include Wikipedia. There are only commercial companies there. The web, the networks are alive. We have new media, new media species, but we, al we also have new interfaces. We have new formats, textual formats. We have an explosion of short formats, SMS, WhatsApp, sneak peeks, trailers. Wire Magazine used to talk about that. They say this is the snack culture. We also have long textual experiences, Harry Potter and all these trilogies going around. So we have an expansion of our textual uh, consume. We have new actors, new companies, hmm? fusion between companies. Let's talk about the interfaces. Here, the many, many, many beautiful things are going on in this specific place of interfaces. I really love this book, video game. Musical instrument. It's a musical instrument. Here we can see a good example of convergence of interfaces. Interfaces from many other devices, from many other media are converging. This is not new. In the, in the 90s we, with the web, we have this convergence of different language. We used to talk about multimedia. Also in the CD-ROMs, the old CD-ROMs, encyclopedias, we have this convergence of languages. Now with the tablets and the smartphones, we have a huge convergence of different languages, grammars, in the same environment. And this process is still alive and it's still going on. That's very important to take account. This is part of the changes in the uh, media ecology. Before, we used to spend a lot of time in a few media, reading the newspaper in the morning, then we listen 
to the radio many hours, watching television, broadcasting, and maybe going to the cinema once a month. Now we spend little time in many media because we have a lot of new media now and our media diet has changed. This paramount is from Wire magazine, it's about four or five years old. According to this research we, in the USA, they spend nine hours a day consuming information and producing information. According to that book, The Information Diet, that book is from 2011, yeah, we spend 11 hours every day consuming and generating information. That's why we talk about prosumers now, producers and consumers at the same time. This is beautiful in the sense that we have a lot of, we have more information, more devices, more ways of getting information, more, more environments for producing information. But this fragmentation of audiences or atomization of audiences is killing the traditional business model of broadcasting. The model of broadcasting was to have a lot of people watching the same program at the same time. And here we have this explosion of media consumed practices. In this context, many people are talking about transmedia storytelling. One of the strategies for connecting all these uh, expanded media experiences is to create a storytelling, a narrative that integrates the different um, elements. That's why when we talk about transmedia storytelling, we're also talking about this, connecting the different media experiences hmm, to equilibrate this explosion of the audiences, the traditional broadcasting audiences. If we talk about transmedia, for example, Star Wars is a good example, or Harry Potter, or Matrix, and many other productions. Uh, we have the, the story, the, the narrative world is told in different media and platforms, and the, the other important element is on the top, user-generated content. People participate because they are prosumers, they are not only consumers. They produce new text, they expand the narrative world using many of these new media. So this is more or less what's going on in the media ecology. This is just a draft, a map of media ecology. When I was preparing this presentation, I said, well, what's Wikipedia? Yeah, we can say that Wikipedia is a living entity also that adapts to media ecology and evolves. Wikipedia is alive. We can discover this when you see the discussion behind any text in Wikipedia. But some people is working in the development of new interfaces and new representation devices for showing the activity of the Wikipedia. Maybe many of you already know this project. I really love it. It's a project to listen the sound of Wikipedia. You can see in real time. <laughs> New text, the bigger the circle. We don't have much time, but we, we could check that in real time to see what's going on right now in the Wikipedia. I really like these new interfaces, and I think that we should go in this direction. I think that. The big Wikipedia is the best embodiment of the Ted Nelson hypertext. The idea of the hypertext that Ted Nelson introduced in the 60s, an open textual network where anyone can change that and create new links, I think the Wikipedia is the best representation. Ted Nelson came to Barcelona in 2004 and 5. He stayed with us a couple of days, and we talked a lot about that. And we asked Ted Nelson, well, what's about a CD-ROM? It's a hypertext. He said, no, absolutely no. Even if you have a network structure in the CD-ROM, that's not uh, the hypertext. In the CD-ROM, CD CD you can't change anything. It's fixed the information. That's not my original idea of hypertext. So we asked Tim Nelson, what about the web? Well, the web, yes, it's, it's a network, but you can change web pages. The final question, and what about Wikipedia? And Ted Nelson said, well, yeah, that's the, the, it's the closest thing I have seen, uh, very close to my idea of, original idea of hypertext. Uh, organic 
network where anyone can change, create new links, and you can recover the old text. He, he was talking about the docuplex, the complex document. We can talk about textual galaxy. In, in that sense, I, I found this other beautiful project, maybe you also know this one. It's an astronomical representation of Wikipedia, and you can navigate. Here I was looking for Diego Maradona, the soccer player. And you can see the connections. You can navigate in the information. Obviously, there's a, there's a connection to Mexico 86 when we won the World Cup here. <laughs> so you can see these devices, they, they show this idea of the Wikipedia as an organic environment, alive, evolving environment, and the connections, and how it changed. I think that Wikipedia has created the most powerful non-profit niche of the media ecology. If you see the top 10, the top 50 websites, the most visited websites in the new media ecology, all of them are practically uh, profit commercial websites. I think the, 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 the importance of the, 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 the power of Wikipedia and not only Wikipedia is really important you know, because it represents maybe the best of the original ideology of the web this open web, this meta medium where you can generate new things. But Wikipedia, as you already know, is not alone. We can talk about a big uh, environment, a niche inside the big media ecology. And I really, I was surprised because I knew a couple of them, but when I started looking for all this mapping, this media ecology, inside the media ecology, the Wikipedia ecology, I was really surprised for the new experiences. And I think in events like this, you are creating also new exper experiences inside here. If you look to commercial companies, maybe the, the closest to this is Google or maybe Apple. But I think Google has this, this structure, of organic structure and connection between the different things. And I think this is a non-profit project. Let's remember that. That's because it's also really, really important. And to expand this niche inside the big media ecology. Hmm? If we talk about media ecology, and we explore the metaphor, we should also talk about media evolution. In that sense, we can say that the old media species, they have to adapt if they want to survive in the new media ecology. We can see how old media are trying to adapt to survive. If you watch contemporary television, television has changed a lot. If you see the complexity of contemporary television narratives, it's, it's really great. My grandfather, he would never understood Lost, for example, was so complex for him, for his generations. So we can see how the television is trying to create a more complex, gamificated narrative to talk to the new generations. To, this is a typical adaptation process. Television is trying to adapt. It's trying to create new formats. It's exploring the new platforms. Think about Netflix, think about YouTube. Let's talk about the newspapers, journals, newspapers. Newspapers are trying to adapt. If you open today a newspaper, it's completely different from a newspaper of 25 years ago, before the web. Now, newspapers, they fragment information. They include a lot of infographics, pictures, little blocks of text, because people, they don't want to read a lot. We can say that today a newspaper is a printed website, a web page. It's a printed web page. My opinion is that the situation is really hard for newspapers. I think even if they try to adapt, they will not do it. I think that newspapers, this object that we buy and we read in the morning, this paper printed 12 hours ago with information, yesterday information, has no future. I'm not talking about the end of journalism. I'm not talking about the end of magazines. I think they're only talking about the newspaper. Hmm? So media can get extinct. What about this? 
we can say that Wikipedia and other digital encyclopedias, but especially Wikipedia, has killed the traditional printed uh, encyclopedias. Yes, we, people used to spend a lot of money to buy this encyclopedia, to put in the living, and the children, they, they never opened that books. <laughs> well, I think this is an extinct media species. But we should remember this. When we talk about extinction, it's not a complete disappear of the media. For example, the telegraph, 19th century telegraph, has almost disappeared. We can consider the telegraph an extinct media. But we can see now that the telegraphic language is alive. Every time we send a, every time we tweet, every time we send a WhatsApp, SMS, we are using the telegraphic language. So that's important to see the evolution and extinction or, or partial extinction of media. This was more or less the structure of the encyclopedia of Diderot and D'Alembert. If you analyze, they have a tree structure, but they also had links. They have a huge classification of links between the text and the images, between text, between different categories. They also use the links for politics, creating uh, strong senses or bad senses about some concepts. Uh, I think that, yes, the traditional printed encyclopedia is extinct, but the idea of links creating connections is alive in our Wikipedia. Uh, Marsha McLuhan used to say the content of a new media is an old media, is one of his famous aphorisms. This is true. The content of the new media, the Wikipedia, is the old media. The links, this structure, Obviously, we have new things. It's collective, open access, and it's alive. It's increasing at every moment that we have seen. But uh, that we still keep something from the past. Just to finish, two ideas about evolution of Wikipedia proposals. I think we have to increase the transmedia content because we have seen that one of the key elements of the new media ecology is transmedia storytelling. So maybe we can explore more hybridizations. Uh, our next speaker, <laughs> Nestor Garcia Canclini, is a key reference about cultural hybridizations. If I'm talking about that, because I, I've been reading his book for the last 25 years, so pay attention to the next speaker. Why not thinking about wiki games? Why not thinking about wiki comics? Maybe there are initiatives in this field, wiki apps. Uh, but I think we should explore more combinations, hybridizations, and transforming this uh, only textual or only text and image project in a more transmedia experience. Mm? I found this project about playing with Wikipedia, this uh, gamification of Wikipedia. I think we should explore these dimensions. Another idea, the second one, is about new interfaces. I think this project I have shown you before are in the right direction. We should be able to navigate in the information. We should be able to navigate in this textual galaxy. We should go beyond the idea of the page and the text. We have 2,000 years of browsing culture, so it's very difficult to change that. But we are moving also in the right direction. And I want to show you, I want to share with you a project from my university, not my department, I'm in communication department. This is from the ACT department. It's called the rec table. Maybe you know this. This is an instrument for electronic music. And I was thinking, why not creating an interface like this for navigating in the Wikipedia?
why not think an intangible interfaces to move in the textual galaxy of the Wikipedia? Why not think in more material interfaces to explore and to add new content, to create links inside the Wikipedia? And not only Wikipedia, in the whole wiki environment niche that I have shown you before. This is already a commercial product. Musicians like Bjork are using this. There's an application for the iPad I recommend you. But what's important here is the idea of exploring new ways of interacting with information, exploring new ways of navigating in this textual network. And well, just to finish, uh, a bonus a proposal, a bonus idea. I think that we, you, are, we, everyone, uh, we are the future of Wikipedia. And as I told you in the beginning, I, I saw a lot of young people in this uh, conference, so I, I think we have a good future in front of us. Uh, thanks for your attention. Now we have uh, 30 minutes again for questions. Uh, well, thanks. Mm -hmm.